When it comes to armor in Monster Hunter, defenses and resistances are nice, but what you really want are the armor skills. This guide series is going to focus on a progression path that you can easily follow for a reasonable build to get you through low rank and high rank. In low rank, progression is fairly linear and there isn't a lot of need to deviate. High rank is much more open-ended and will have many more options for you to explore. High rank builds will focus on decoration lists and charmless setups as those require rare materials and a lot of luck for decorations. You will need to make a choice between alpha and beta gear. Alpha gear has more skills, but sometimes has skills that aren't particularly useful on them. The beta versions usually give up skills for decoration slots. If you don't have decorations, the alpha sets are always better. If you have powerful decorations, the beta pieces are usually the better option as it will allow for further customization. These builds are reasonably effective and will be sufficient for getting you through the game. You may have skills that you favor on certain weapon types that aren't listed, and you should experiment to learn your playstyle. Your default armor is terrible, and you'll want to upgrade it right away. The easiest thing you can do is just build the entire bone set. This will be mostly beneficial for the headpiece's health boost, granting you plus 15 maximum HP, and the bone chest's attack up, granting you plus 3 attack power. The remaining bone pieces will benefit certain weapon types and not others. The gloves will give slugger, which is good for blunt weapons like hammer, hunting horn, and file attacks from the charge blade and switch axe. Bone Coil is only good for Hunting Horn, but it will extend the length of your songs. The Bone Greaves grant Entomologist, which helps prevent you from destroying Vespoids and Hornitars so you can carve them. Regardless of the skills it offers, this set is extremely easy to build and represents a good armor value spike that you should take starting out. Early on you'll be given an assignment to hunt Kestodons. After carving some, you'll unlock the ability to build Kestodon Gloves. Build these for Affinity Sliding, which gives you a temporary boost to your critical hit rate after sliding for a short period of time. They also have a strong defense boost over bone gauntlets and should be picked up for most weapon types. This set will be enough to tide you over until you hunt Great Jagras. Afterwards, you'll want to look into picking up the Jagras Coil. This provides Fortify, which gives you an attack and defense bonus if your HP reaches zero and you're carted back to camp. Fortify is a nice bonus for new players, and even veteran players will cart occasionally. It's a good pickup for all weapon types. Then you'll have to hunt Kuluyaku. You'll want to build both its Kulu male chest armor and the Kulu Greaves leg armor. The chest grants stamina surge which increases your stamina recovery rate. This is a great skill for every weapon type, but certain weapons will benefit much more from it. The Kulu Greaves grant critical eye which increases your affinity or critical hit rate by 3%. This isn't huge, but going from 0 to 3% affinity will actually allow you to perform critical hits and it will be a significant damage increase. This will be an acceptable set of baseline armor for the next mandatory fights. From here on though, things will be handled on a weapon by weapon basis. There isn't a lot of Insect Glaive specific gear. Even then, things like Jump Master and Airborne aren't nearly as good as they appear. You'll want to pick up some things like Master Mounter when possible, but stacking damage and sharpness will be the go-to. Sharpness is especially useful. The base armor set will have to tide you over to take on Puki Puki and Baroth. Unfortunately, there isn't much to upgrade until you get to Tobi Kadachi, at which point you get to upgrade basically everything. The Kadachi Helm grants Constitution. It will reduce the amount of stamina dodging will consume. Constitution has good synergy with mounting monsters as Insect Glaive is the only weapon capable of dealing any real damage while mounted, but you'll consume stamina while doing so. You'll also want to build the Kadachi Van Braces for Evade Extender which will help you reposition. It's not the greatest pickup for Insect Glaive, but there's nothing better at this point. The Kadachi Mail can be a reasonable upgrade, but doesn't work nearly as well as it appears. Your vaulting attacks unfortunately do not count as jumping attacks. For whatever reason, jump attacks are only considered things that are capable of mounting monsters. Pick it up because it will help, it's just unfortunate that it's not nearly as good as it sounds. Finally, if you're using Toby Kadachi's weapon, pick up the Kadachi coil for a bonus to thunder attack. This will be a more consistent damage boost compared to Fortify. Anjanath is next, unfortunately, it has no reasonable options for us. Once you're in the Coral Highlands, you'll have to hunt Paolumu as part of the story. You can switch the Kadachi Helm for Paolumu's hat to trade Constitution for Stamina Surge. Both will have similar performance, but the Lumu hat will have better defenses. You can also upgrade to the Lumu Coil if you find yourself taking a lot of damage. Divine Blessing mitigates a lot of damage, so it is a good pickup. Finally, you can also pick up the Lumu Mail for Master Mounter. This makes it easier not only to mount monsters, but to take down mounted monsters. This is a preference thing, but since mounting is Insect Glaive's specialty, you may as well play to its strengths and pick this up. Head down to the Rotten Vale and hunt Hornitars. Build the Greaves for Handicraft, which increases your weapon's sharpness. Insect Glaive absolutely shreds sharpness, so this is definitely worth picking up.
then finish off Rattoban and Legiana. Legiana's Van Braces have the Airborne skill. This would be an amazing pickup if vaulting attacks counted as airborne attacks, but for whatever reason, they do not. Unfortunately, they just aren't as good as they appear. They can be an okay pickup, as some attacks will benefit from them, but overall, they're not great. However, with Monster Bone Plus from Legiana, you can also build the Death Stench Heal. This will be a good defense increase over the Hornetar Greaves, and will let you maintain Handicraft. Next up is Odegaron. Pick up its coil for Critical Eye before moving on to hunt Rathalos and Diablos. You can also optionally build its Van Braces for Constitution over Kadachi's Evade Extender or the not-so-great Airborne from Legiana Van Braces. You're so close to high rank here that you may want to avoid farming and just move on. Of course, this is an idealized armor guide. Rathalos has good gear. Pick up the Rathalos Helm for attack up, then build the chest for weakness exploit giving you a massive affinity bonus while attacking weak points. Optionally here you can build the Rathalos Greaves for Jump Master, and with the chest and head it will unlock the 3 piece bonus of critical element. This will be a reasonable pickup for Insect Glaive as you attack quite fast. Alternatively if you like the handicraft from Death Stench Heal, you can build the Rathalos Van Braces instead to pick up critical element. Build these pieces if you want, but it's time to move on to high rank. High rank finally introduces us to some options. There's a lot of upgrades available now and you can immediately go and hunt high rank versions of everything in low rank. The easy answer is that anything that worked for you in low rank will work here while providing additional skills and high rank defenses. This guide assumes that you have no useful decorations, as such the beta gear is simply worse than the alpha gear as it loses skills for decoration slots. If you have decorations, consider the beta versions of some pieces, otherwise stick with alpha. The same goes for charms and this armor guide is charmless. Go ahead and pick up whatever charms you see fit, like attack or handicraft. Unfortunately you're going to lose all your set bonuses and kind of start back from square one in high rank. The Kulu headpiece alpha should be picked up immediately for a second stack of weakness exploit. You'll lose critical element if you have the three piece Rathalos set, but gaining the extra affinity will be worth it. You don't have many upgrades available for gloves, so pick up the Bone Van Braces alpha for attack and slugger. You won't benefit from slugger, but the attack bonus is better than anything else at this point, and they're easy to build. Also head to the Rotten Veil to hunt Hornetarus to get some much needed handicraft off the Greaves beta. Now hunt Pink Rathian and pick up its Wrath Heart coil alpha for more handicraft and poison resistance. That should make you adequately prepared to take on the higher tier monsters of high rank. Odegaron's set is a great choice for Insect Glaive. It provides a lot of critical eye, speed sharpening, and the 4 piece set bonus is Protective Polish. Protective Polish prevents your weapon from losing sharpness for 60 seconds after sharpening. It's a great skill, but you do give up a lot to get it. Insect Glaive really, really shreds its sharpness, so going for Protective Polish is probably one of the best options you have at this point in the game. Build the Headgear Alpha for Critical Eye, the Gloves for Constitution and Critical Eye, the Coil for Critical Eye and Speed Sharpening, and the Boots for Quick Sheath and Critical Eye. You'll want to pair this with a low rank Rathalos Chest to maintain Weakness Exploit. The next big set is the Rathalos set. The two piece set is Critical Element, which will represent a reasonable damage upgrade for Elemental Insect Blades. The two piece set is extremely easy to get and has amazing synergy with the chest and boots which give you 3 points of weakness exploit. Grab the Rathalos Greaves Alpha for Jump Master and weakness exploit, then pick up the male beta for weakness exploit 2 and a slot. You'll need a plate and a gem for this but these are great pickups. You'll regain critical element and weakness exploit level 3. This also frees up your headpiece to upgrade to something else. The Rathalos Helm beta is a great option as is the Zora headgear beta for more handicraft. Since Insect Glaive uses so much sharpness, the Protective Polish set is probably what you should take. These sets will be adequate for everything else in the game. Everything after this is just a matter of customization and preference once you get access to better charms and decorations. The Elder Dragon sets are usually safe bets, but won't necessarily be better or worse than this, just different. The Gigante set is a great general purpose set. It has maximum might which gives you a 30% affinity increase while at maximum stamina. This works okay on Insect Glaive since you won't use stamina for attacking. It also has Agitator which has a very high uptime of increased attack and affinity. Then it has attack and stamina search to round it out. It's a good general purpose set that's really easy to build. 
Nergigante's Dragon King Eye Patch has weakness exploit level 2 and a tier 3 decoration slot, making it a great pickup. You can tie this with the chest, hands, waist, and legs of the Odegaron set to have a better set than the previous Protective Polish set. Kushala Daura's gear is a lot of handicraft. You'll want to look at the Kushala Sista Beta for handicraft and the Grips Alpha and Cruce Alpha for more handicraft options. Xenojiva actually has some interesting gear for Insect Glaive. The Xenojiva Hide Beta has Power Prolonger, which increases the uptime of your Kinsect Essence buffs. The Claws Alpha have Critical Boost and Flinch Free, and finally the Spurs Alpha have Flinch Free and more Power Prolonger. With these three pieces, you'll unlock the three-piece set bonus of Razor Sharp. This doubles your weapon's sharpness gauge and will make it so you don't have to sharpen nearly as often. Of course, farming Xenojiva is a pretty terrible experience, and Razor Sharp has very similar performance to Protective Polish. Obviously, your main targets for endgame are to get a Protective Polish decoration, which will completely eliminate your sharpness problems and free up the rest of your gear for different skills like Handicraft, Attack, and Critical Boost. 